Hi, I'm Frank and welcome to my podcast, The Ride of a Lifetime. On this podcast, I share my personal journey through the ups and downs of building successful businesses. Each episode, I dive into the different aspects of my life from overcoming business challenges, starting a family and designing my own cutting edge carbon fiber e-bike. I hope this podcast can inspire and motivate listeners to take the leap and chase their dreams. Get ready for an exciting journey through the cycles of success with me and some of my friends I have made along the way. On this episode, I'm delighted to be joined by my good old mate, Pick Pickot. He needs no introduction. I had a big dream to meet Pick many years ago and he was even more awesome in person than I hoped he would be. He shared his wisdom with me about marketing and business, and we talk all about that in this episode. Enjoy. Yeah, I remember in in 2018, I think it was March or something, when when I realized that um, marketing really, I had to do a lot for my marketing for the business to grow, mm. and I wasn't the businesses I had beforehand, I wasn't really the networker. I didn't need to be. So it was really different this time to find an angle how to go to market. It, everything felt new. And I started to sort of play a little bit with Facebook and all sort of things. And then and then one day, Jessie Greetmore, she came and she said, she said, oh, Frank, um, are you around? I want to catch up with you. And I said, well, what is it about, Jesse? And she says, ah, oh, you know, um, Chamber of Commerce, you know, I want to be a member again. And I said, oh, gosh, yeah, you can come around. Let's have a chat. But last time I signed up with them, I, I didn't really get a lot out of it because I never never joined them. And, and I think the Chamber of Commerce is a really good thing if you actively go there, you network, you meet people and all that. Indeed, yeah. And I, I actually never done that. And so I said, come around and we have a have a bit of a chat. And she she did come around and she said, Ah, oh, Frank, you know, we got a new CEO, Ali Boswick, and everything changed a little bit. And I said, Yeah, but you know, I never never got anything out of it. Why would I join? And she says, Ah, oh, God, we have so many cool events now and so many good people, and you know, and that's cheaper too. It's actually not not that expensive. And I said, Ah, oh, good. Um, I said, Jesse, one thing. You know, there's one person I always admired along the way because he is sort of the master of marketing himself. And and I tell you something, it's if you can make it happen that I can get together with Pick, shake his hand and shout him a beer, I sign right <laughs> now. <laughs> so I'd like to join the chamber. And, oh, and she said, Frank, that can be done. And I said, well, okay, I sign right now and you make it happen. She says, yes. <laughs> and and I, I, I don't know if I, if I believed her or not really, but, but because she was so spontaneous in saying yes, and, and that really that, that brightened up my day because she might be able to make something happen, which I couldn't, you know, because I, I didn't know you as such. I just only admired that person. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, it was so cool. So the phone rang, and I think it wasn't even two weeks after the phone mm. rang, and Lou was on it. Lou, my PA. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and she she rang and she says, "Hey Frank, how are you?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, who is that? Ah, uh, it's it's Pixel's PA. It's it's <laughs> or something like this. I can't remember the name. Yeah. What what she said, but she said, "Ah, oh, I heard you like to meet Pig." And I was like, I think I was speechless for a second because I didn't actually think it's going to happen. And 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 I said, yes, yeah, I would love to. And she says, when are you free? And I said, well, I'm free at any time. But when is he free? I make myself available. And she says, oh, okay, such and such a time. And 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 I don't know. It was it was actually in a really small time frame that it was all arranged. And then I came and and met you. And I think. It, it was really meeting somebody that you looked up to suddenly in front of you. And it was, it was really, really cool. And I, I remember the, when, when you said, oh, you know, what are you doing? And, and, and what really 
was good for me to, to actually that you show an interest in what, what I did. You know, it, it really made that, that meeting really enjoyable in a way because you listened to what I had to say. And and then when when you sort of said, Oh God, what are you doing for marketing and you know, and all those things and then the tips you you gave me along the way, it, it I think that changed my business forever because what but all the follow on things after that meeting mm. you remember that how was so was that when you when when you were about to that you were the, the consumer was about to publish the yeah. reports that had you number one in uh, in uh, electric bikes that yeah, it that was at that time it wasn't published i think it wasn't published then but no, it was just it was just about to come out and i said what have you got in the way of pr and you said what's that yeah you know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. oh no that's so cool that's so cool and that's one of the neat things i i find and i referred you to jackie at that time yeah. jackie walters and i and that's one of the neatest things i find about being a business and working working with a lot of people is putting people in touch with other people you know it takes so little effort but if you if you can put the right person in touch with the right person for them it can change their lives and um i think that's w what i was able to do just because i know jackie and i know you and and i and it was such an easy thing to do yeah. so um and i think anyway you know just talking talking to anyone in business saying look i've got you know do you know anyone who might you know, and, and people who have these connections and things, yeah. and if they can put you in touch, it's very easy for them. Yeah. Just involves usually just a phone call or yeah. a recommendation. And, uh, you know, I'll say Frank's a good fellow, you know, Jackie's a good woman, you'll get on well. And um, it's it's a, such an easy thing. But that that was funny. Yeah, that's a, a oh, good story. And 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 the, the flow on effect, like, I don't know if, if you probably didn't realize, but... When I when you said ah oh, Jackie Walters, and 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 I left your office, went in the car, and I rung her straight away. Yeah, <laughs> I just and I didn't. What I didn't realize at the time is it also was her birthday, so if I would have known, I probably never called. Right. But, but anyway, and and when I said to her, I said ah, oh, Jackie, uh, you don't know me, but Pick just said you're an absolute superstar and what you're doing you're really good and everything i wonder if you got if you got a, a meeting time for me to catch up with you and i want to tell you what what i'm doing mm. and it was amazing that she sort of invited me across to her place at her birthday like, <laughs> like you know i mean you get a bit of cake and i didn't have cake but a <laughs> coffee a nice coffee yeah. but it, it's incredible how how this tip then turned into meeting Jackie mm. and then and sitting with her and really when I look back what we achieved so far, mm. at that time we didn't even had had a lot to our name. It was really the early days. We mm. really mm. didn't want anything or just about to sort of come on the consumer, but really that's all we had. But yeah. somehow she had that feeling that this had something. Yeah. That story something it was a combination of uh, uh, it does absolutely and that and that opportunity with consumer was phenomenal and you'd be you'd have been thinking oh gosh we're going to be in consumer we'll be famous you know yeah. great but you're not famous unless people hear about it exactly and so this is what jackie w was able to do was to amplify that and say to her contacts in the media and she has these wonderful contacts and they yeah, and they yeah. really respect what she offers because yeah. she doesn't she's not just sending out press releases about everything um but she had those contacts and and this was something that they would very this is very much something that they would like to wrap a story around so yeah. you know there, there's a huge opportunity around that 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 she was able to help you make the most of so you what did you get on seven shot mm -hmm. or something did you? yeah when 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 we chatted it yeah and she says oh yeah yeah that story is, is pretty good and um and i think we could do something with that story I said, oh, yeah, maybe something in the newspaper or something. She says, oh, I might I might even get you on TV. Mm. And I said, yeah, sure. I, I, like, you know, I never believed in my wildest dreams that, be on that TV. We, we actually <laughs> would, would make it. Yeah. And then she says, oh, I have a chat to Michael Holland and, and see. Yeah. So anyway, we, we talked a bit longer. And then 
and we wrapped it up because after all it was her birthday. And I went home and I told my wife about it. Oh, I just, you know, I met Pick and then straight after I met Jackie and I was really in cloud 11, if such thing exists. Nah. Because I, I, it just was, I, I felt it was a really important day in my business career, yeah. having those meetings. And so the next morning, I never forget that, she rung, Jackie rung and she says, hey Frank, I got a birthday present for you. And I thought, wow. We met 12 hours before. Yeah. And you're giving me already something? I, th I thought, wow, what, what a thing. And um, and she said, sit down, sit down. And I said, okay, I sit down. What What's what's happening? And she says, ah, Michael Holland's coming to film you. And I was, I couldn't believe it. Ah, and she said, I just are you lucky because he's coming to do some filming with Pick as well. Yeah. And then he can tag you along. And I was, Wow. You know, I couldn't believe it. And and I think it was midweek or something, and the filming supposed to be on a Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. And I was really freaking out because it was really the early days. Of Getting your hair done and all that oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, Buying a new shirt. I, actually, I didn't. I got something else done. Yeah. Because, because, like, I looked in my garage and I thought, God, when they come with the video cameras and, you know, and filming everything, yeah. And is it actually looking, because carbon fiber is, is it's a really, a really um, superior product. You know, right. it's, it's something, an, another level up. Yeah. And then, and I had them all lined up in my garage, but I had cracks in my concrete, you know, and I, mm -hmm. and, and, and I thought, I thought you, you, you're showing off your carbon product, mm -hmm. but then you got like a, cheapy looking <laughs> garage floors I really panicked and it yeah. was on a Saturday so I said to my wife hey we, we have to sort of do something about it let's go and get, find some garage carpet quick right so we went to to Bunnings and they only yeah. had cheap stuff there yeah. and then my the 10 and they haven't didn't have the right stuff so you went to to um to that carpets carpet court or what it called yeah. and they had the proper garage carpet there and I said okay I need that many square meters because TV is coming and I was really hyped up and she says, yeah, you can get it on Monday. And I said, oh my God, like they've come and film Monday. I need it today. And she says, no, the store people aren't there. You, you can't have it. Yeah. And anyway, so I, I said, okay, I come Monday morning first thing and things got, actually the filming got, got postponed by a couple of days. So it was really, really good for me. So I had time and cut all the carbon and make it all look really, really fancy. Right. Um, but I think it was, it was good to do this bit after all when they came and they filmed us and and they shown the real place like in the garage like yeah because it was it was all nothing was staged it was all oh god you had new carpet yes you staged it with new but, carpet <laughs> that's true <laughs> but yes okay the carpet was but it's still for real you didn't yeah. roll it up after the filming i glued it on there okay but yeah, it, it just it just was amazing to have that opportunity there yeah and I think what what Michael said again after the filming, he says, make sure you don't sort of lie back on the, on that little bit of, of fame kind right. of thing. Yep. Just keep pushing. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, good. He's a lovely he, guy, isn't he, and, Michael? He's been also really lovely. And he was 100% right because yep. this opportunity mm. which presented, which somebody presented to us with that TV show stuff, yep. And then the opportunities from then on, because suddenly, um, we people knew who we were, mm. you know. Yep. And and I must say as well, what was really interesting is that we changed our business model just before, because we never, I never thought I had a totally different business plan at the beginning, where mm. I thought bike shops will will sell my bikes, and I just focus on on the next goal of where could I go with my product. Yeah. But this keep on what focusing on the technical side. No, I'm on distribution. I I always had in when I realized that product is pretty amazing. Yeah. I thought and it was unique. You see, because I never wanted to do an alloy bike or something like everybody else does. It doesn't matter what I've done in my business, if it was solar water heating or electric office desk or PV. I always wanted to be different to anybody else that it's not well I can get it over there for this price what mm -hmm. can you give me there I had to be different in either the quality 
or the looks or the the package deal. So it had to be different. And doing the carbon bike, I knew it, it, that gave me an, an opportunity to actually take that to another level because not many people in the world do what we're doing. Right. So it had really potential. So I thought, okay, let's establish a distribution channel with bike shops and they then promote a product. And I just focus on growing the business a little further. But as it turned out, I think because we didn't perhaps didn't have a lot to our name that they didn't sell our product flat out. It was mm. on the shop floor, yeah. but they still, I think, promoted another brand over ours when it, when it came down to when a customer mm. asked for an e-bike. So, so based on the numbers we had, I had to make a call on what do I do next? I can't survive on the sales the the bike shops generate for us because I didn't want to make any sales. I was just a pure wholesaler. Mm. But it didn't work, obviously. So again, like so many things in life, so many things in business, you have to make decisions. If something doesn't work, I guess you, you watch it for a little while and then it's like, okay, it doesn't work. We gave it a fair shot. We have to make some changes. Mm. And that's before Michael came along, we just redone our website where we went from being a wholesaler mm. to actually being an online shop dash wholesaler. So so we offered to the bike shops the lower bikes. Yeah. But we also opened the door to end consumers. If you want to come to Nelson, you want to test ride, feel free to do so and we can sell you one as well. So you would sell direct or you would refer them to a Nelson retailer? Well, in Nelson, we didn't have much at that time. It was right. just me, really. Okay. So that was easy. Yeah. So we sold direct to the end consumer. Mm. But if we had people from out of town, we hooked them up with a bike shop. Right. But it, it just meant we needed that extra push of, of revenue to stay to stay in business because yep. the sales weren't that great. So the, the, new business, uh, the new website was all built and um, and then Seven Sharp came along. Mm. So we sat on the front of the TV and watched it all and it was really exciting. And then we had we had a noise which we never had before, which was a cash register. So as somebody buys something in a in a candy store, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, this yeah. noise. And, and we just done that website. It was a Shopify website. So we mm. never heard that before. And oh, so your website actually makes a noise. You, it, your it, computer it goes, goes ka-ching, if some, ka-ching. If somebody bought something online, yeah. And that sound like a cash register. It was amazing. It was like... And you'd get this in your lounge at home. Oh, yeah, because of my phone. Oh, phone. Oh, right. Wacky. I, I used to dream of having such a phone. Oh, my God. Shop, you know. It was the best yeah. sound in the world. Yeah. You know, mate. And the year, bing, 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 bing. Yeah. And... It was these actual bikes. People were buying bikes. Yeah. You know, what a... There's still a shower. It's still spring. It's amazing, but we've only been on it for three minutes or something. Mm-hmm. And within that three minutes, I think we sold at least 10 bikes. In those wow. three minutes, like from people who wow. instantly, yeah. so wow, it it was, it was amazing to see that people really resonated it with our story, yeah. Yeah. with that guy in his shed and yeah. Jimmy in it, because Jimmy was like, yeah, he, he was crucial to the whole yeah hybrid story, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. And I think his when people watch the show and they're seeing, um, Jimmy in there as well with his twenty nine years of of cycling background that it, it, everything fell into place that people mm. could resonate with this and this was basically the turning point from being just a shop to actually potentially becoming a brand which we now working towards where right. people where people know who we are because yes. after seven sharp we had we, we got approached from a lot of, of business magazines and this and this. Mm. So when you look back, this little meeting which we had and then that meeting with Jackie really made made the hybrid bikes really what it is now because without that meeting which, um, which triggered so many events mm. because after that we even made it, like I've been to China um, a few months later, and and the phone rings, and I said, "Oh, yeah," and there was Kiora magazine on it. Yeah, and I was, "Oh my God!" 
I was speechless. It was another mm. one of those Kiora magazine. Wow. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. if you're on a plane and you read those amazing stories and, yeah. and you think, yeah. wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? And then suddenly the phone rings and and Matt is on it. Yeah. One of the writers. And he says, hey, I wouldn't mind, you know, would you be interested to do a story with them? Mm. Oh, my God. So I said, yes, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, Frank, and you have a story. You have a very real story. A lot of people sort of make a product or import a product or sort of they're making something and they flogging it off and they think, and then they think we need we need a story. We need we need to have a story. We've got to build a story about this. And they rush around trying to invent a story. But actually, you've got a real story, you know, because you designed the bike and, and you know, your, it's your passion and enthusiasm for it that produced the bike and it turns out to be a really good one. Oh. So, you know, you have that story. So it's something interesting for people to hear about. And I think uh, that's where you and I have, have something in common. You know, it's just, it's a very real, it's a very real story. You know, it's not a, not something mm. that's created by marketing people and stuff. That's it's exactly right. real things. Yes. yes. Yeah. You've done really well and, and you deserve it. Yeah. Mm. And, and of course, what, when you say, um, all the things going to happen and, and people coming to you, mm. and like afterwards, when when we beat on Seven Sharp and and, and the Cure magazine and all those things, and you know how you got your tours with your peanut butter factory tours. Yeah. For a time, it's not so much now anymore, but at the time when when we really hit the news in so many different levels, mm. we had buses turning up after they've been to the Pix factory tour. Wow. And then they stopped by because, I mean, we're not far apart from where yeah, we are. Yeah. So it was quite handy. I guess that helped as well that they stopped and they poked their head in and, and just seen me mucking around with Jim and building some bikes. So it, it it's amazing. And I think yeah. what, when you, when you get that feeling of, of achievement, of, mm. of establishing something from nothing. Yeah. And, that, and it's connection. It's connection. It's connection for the with with those customers and and they, and because they're seeing you making it, you know, they're seeing yeah. you making their bikes. Whenever they're talking about bikes, they'll say, "Oh, I met this guy who actually, you know, designs and 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 sells these bikes in his house." You know, he's he's, uh, and and it's and it's that and they feel really they really feel a part of it because they're seeing you working from home and and uh, and developing a business. So when you're you know rich and famous, they'll say. You know, I met that guy at his house, a really <laughs> nice guy, and he was, you know, and this, we yeah. get this with the peanut butter, and I, uh, we get this with the food factory, too. Yeah. People come through and see things in, in a startup phase, and, and they really take ownership of it, and they yes. become some of your biggest promoters, you know, those yeah. people who will yeah, talk about true. you, and that, that word of mouth, and having a few people who really believe in you and are going to talk about you with their friends, and any opportunity is just so much more valuable than having thousands of people look at an ad and say, oh, must have a look at them one day. Mm. I think what what is cool as well, the, the, how the business model is designed when we say we build the bikes, it means actually we, we build them for the customer. Mm. So the customer has the opportunity to come along and he can be part of that journey as well. So it's not a bike which, which jumps out of the box here. It is, yep. you know. It's like, what would you like? That's mm. why we, we sort of make them part of the journey. And, and I think that really gets them going because they know they can contribute. And when they roll their bike out, it's like made for them. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's really engaging them in the whole, in the whole story. So, and, yeah. then, and then they can tell their friends that a little bit because when you walk, I mean, you've been at our place. It's it's. I have, and I've I've got a bike covered with beautiful red stars. Exactly when we done the pink yeah. peanut butter yeah. bike, you know, yeah, that's lovely. That's another another amazing thing, where we just created one, just for you. Made it made it yours, and with some fancy detail like the peanut butter carrier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was that was where they had to go out this afternoon and get a loaf of bread and some some butter to put into it, <laughs> <laughs> but. Hey, that that's you know that's that that happiness yeah. do which which we which we can because we're not a traditional bike shop. Yeah, we we put we try to put our customers always before profit, right? Before yeah, before making a sale is engaging with the customers because ultimately, if the customer feels comfortable, 
he purchased it. Mm. And if he if he doesn't like it, that's okay because we can't you can't make everybody happy. Mm. But making him part of the journey, engaging in them everything, and then um and then they go out and tell their friends, Oh, we had that and we had a good chat and we could do that test right and we mm. it it's just giving customers the time they need mm. to make up their own mind rather than that's it and this is another recipe for for such says for our business model of really not being money focused being customer focused yeah your customers are everything for a business i mean you can have the neatest things in the world and 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 it's not worth it doing unless you have customers and so your customers are your customer base is really all, all you have and so if you if you uh, if you concentrate on your customers you know you you you've got a business and if you don't you haven't yes and and then getting reviews and referrals when when people walk in ah oh, our friend is such and that and he referred us it's just about like your peanut butter i mean yeah. god if if somebody got it and he loves the details everybody else you yeah, have to try this did you do this and I think if if you can build a business on those values, then then you you have a good foundation to keep it growing because people mm. love love the product. And they, they do, and and I think you know you can have the fanciest salesperson in the world, you can pay them a million dollars a year, but but the you the people out there, the public out there, are going to listen to their friend before they're going to exactly. listen to the fancy sales guy. Exactly so right. If their friend says to him, "Hey, look, I've seen these really neat bikes. You know, you need to check out hybrid bikes." So I think that's the that's the key is to just develop, really work on those people you know are going to uh, really you know be your best friends and look after them and and they look after you. It's really you know, when easy. we did when when we started the business. And I said to Jimmy, he, but Jimmy, when Jimmy had his village cycles bike mm -hmm. shop, he did rides every, I don't know, once a week in the afternoon or something, where he took his customers out for a little bike ride. Yeah. And I said to Jimmy, that is really, really cool. We should do that one day. But because, again, he had staff and then he could sort of get away a little easier than, than I can, it, it, we never really managed to do that. And then one day in 2021, I said to Jimmy, hey, why don't we do a hybrid appreciation ride? Like really give back to those people who mm. invested into us, into our brand. Mm. And he says, what do you want to do? And I said, wouldn't it be nice if we could put a ride on where hybrid bikes sponsors the event and it doesn't have to be a long one, mm. but just something to say thank you. You know, because they could have bought any brand, they could have done anything. But no, nah, they they chosen to buy from a local, I would say, pretty unknown brand at the time, and um, and supported us. So so I said to Jimmy, let's do this. So we we just rung around and we just wanted to see what the feedback is. And at the time, we had I think around 150 hybrid e-bikes, the Nelson Tasman. Wow, 150 and, Nelson Tasman. That was two, in 2021. Yeah. And so we went so I went on the phone and on an email and we contacted all of them. We just raised that idea. If we would do a little group ride, a little hybrid appreciation, appreciation ride, would you be interested to join? Yeah. And I must say our demographic is 55, 60 plus. They love that carbon, that lightness of the product. And again... Those people are the ones which have campers and caravans and, and cruising around. So out of the 150 bikes, or out of the 150 riders, 85 said yes, he would come. So it was instantly half, more than half. Fantastic. And yeah. the others said, ah, we would, but be out with a camper yeah. and yeah. whatever. Mm. But uh, but this shown me that people love to be part of it. Mm. They felt like they got treated well, they got a nice product, they can yeah. relate to this. And that's when we did our first hybrid e-bike ride. And the response was amazing. It's like, oh, if we do that again, we coming again. It was so much fun because he made it just like the business model is a nice, relaxing atmosphere where there's no pressure sales, there's no nothing. You'll be part of the story. And we showed them all a nice, a nice ride with, with um, little 
snacks at Rabbit Island and then a little barbecue um, at the Avida Clubhouse, like the Avida yeah, Retirement yeah, Village. Yeah. I must stay done really, really good. Yeah. They they offered us the space to actually hold our host our event. Mm. So that they didn't need to do that because they what they get out of it, but they just seen I think that they've they felt for us in what we're doing and, mm. and they and they had the f- the facility mm. and they just kind of And I guess, you know, they're fifty five plus, you know, and they that's their target market. They, hey. Actually I must tell you at, at the end how it turned out, which yeah. was really unexpectedly, mm. is that they sold a they sold a unit yeah after the event oh fantastic we, we just like, yeah, wow be happy you know yeah, so yeah. so that little side mm-hmm. effect was really really good for them oh no, that's lovely Frank so you were sort of passing that sort of thing on you know yeah it, it just, just so you have that ability to do the, that a win yeah. win situation all around yeah. where, where sometimes that you, you can't win all the way along such events you can. Because you make everybody happy, everybody wants to be part of it. Yep, and that's how we're doing it again. Um, no, that's this year. that's very clever. And you just thought of that, did you? That just the yeah. And did and how did you originally come to get their assistance with your your bike ride? Well, I I knew Jason, and I had a chat to him, and I said, "Hey, we we planning." Jason's the Jason manager. Jenkins is it? Yeah, is, yep. is the manager. Yeah, and I just sort of run my idea past him. Great. And and he says, oh, yeah, you know, we got a clubhouse here. I think, I mean, at the time, the village was a lot smaller than what mm-hmm. it is now, so that mm-hmm. that's really it was at the beginning. But but offering this village mm-hmm. to us for for that um, for that Sunday yeah. at, from 10 to 2 o'clock was amazing. Mm-hmm. And that, 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 gave, that gave us a, a, a starting point where we can go back to and have our, our barbecue and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was right across the Great Taste Trail as well. Which was amazing, mm. and this was a, I think a lot of people do remember that one because it was it, it was a windy day, but it was a great day. Yeah, and we trusted to cross the road. We had safety marshals on those on on the bridge, right? On the bridge at Rabbit Island. On we had to go through a fence gate, so we had somebody there just to make sure that health and safety was really important as well. And um, yeah, it was it was amazing. And I think this year should be even better because now the ride we're doing next week is uh, more than double the amount of riders, and, and sort of few more other people which which aren't hybrid riders, but yeah. we might they may become hybrid bike riders. But yeah, it just was amazing, and it it's just because those customers appreciated yeah. the journey they had with our brand, um, and then and then being proud of, of riding our product. So um, when you realize, what did you say, 150 at, users of your bikes in, at, at 20, in, the, in the region? In the region, yes. That's phenomenal. So, I mean, when 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 I did, when I, I realized, I counted out how much peanut butter we were selling in, in, in the Nelson Tasman region, region when we started, and then I thought, okay, well, if we get that same sort of uptake around the rest of New Zealand, it's going to be, and and it was a sort of boggling number, so I divided it by two because I thought, and it was still a boggling number. So, I mean, when you multiply that out around the country, it yeah. must have blown your head off, did it? Well, uh, it's a huge it number. It'd be a huge number of bikes. Oh yes, yeah, but around the country, there's there was only one Frank to actually offer that unique yeah. service. Yeah. So so we got we got again like everything. We got bike shops which are really committed to the brand, yeah. which which like the brand as much as we do. Yeah, and then there are bike shops which have it in their shop, right? But they they're not engaged in that brand like right. some others are. Yeah. So you can see that on the sales numbers where yeah. some people sell a lot, and and that's just how how business is. But and do you uh, periodically trot around those bike shops? Yes. Mm. Yeah. We yeah. we can. We do. Probably twice a year, yeah. try to see them pop in, yeah. but be constantly in touch with with the bike shops, just offering, yeah. what what can we do mm. to to help you guys mm. selling more product? Yeah, I mean, I love, I love, I love your, I love your attitude to service. You know that 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 uh, you really understand how important it is when somebody buys a bike that they are 
going to be able to enjoy continued service, and they know that's going to be there, you know, till, till for, for as long as they're, they're as long as they're you know pedaling. So, uh, and that's something I really appreciate with my bike, you know, is to be able to mm. know that if if I have any problems with it, you know, it's going to be fixed. So that's fantastic. I think I think the next thing, pick is there are a lot a lot of brands of bikes out there. Yeah, but from a consumer point, mm. the only the only point you got is the bike shop you bought it from. Mm. Like, if you buy whatever, a Scott, a Vanti, a whatever kind of brand, you buy it there, and if there's something wrong or something, you need to you need to, to, to go back to the bike shop and blah, 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 mm. where with the hybrid brand, you can buy that in any bike shop, doesn't matter from us, from anybody, but you know who is behind the brand. So those mm. guys can ring me just about really seven days a week yeah. if they feel... They have a question, or they yeah. don't know what to do, or, they, or a problem, or whatever. They know who's behind the brand, and I think it's important to me because they're running around. They just spend five thousand plus dollars on a on a bike. Mm. They got my name designed by Vitalski on the frame. Mm. I feel obligated, and I happily do that to offer them. Call me if you got a problem. One of the things I really like about mm -hmm. you and the way you do your parts and things, I know that if I lose my charger, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to just ring you up and say, you know, I need another charger, Frank. Or I might be able to do it because I know you. Yeah. But I can't just sort of order another charger because, and you're, because you're very aware that if somebody nicks a bike, the chances are they're not going to get a charger with it. And they're yep. going to be trying to find a charger for for one of your bikes. And if they can't come up with a serial number, correct, they're not going to get a charger. And I, that's phenomenal because I know that I'm sure I could walk into any bike shop and get a get a charger for an Avanti sort of bike. They're on the shelf without mm -hmm. without any questions asked. Mm -hmm. So I, that's a that's a fantastic uh, angle and a, and a very very responsible way of doing business. I think, but it didn't go down too well with everybody. Okay, who did who did not like uh, the thieves? I imagine. Yeah, well, we had, I mean, we, we made that statement, yeah, and we been and stuff and all that mm. about that. But I think you, you as a, as the owner of the brand, yeah, you you have responsibility mm. to your customers, mm. and and the statement I made in the news was that only people who can have proof of purchase, yeah. They will be able to to get a new charger easy. Just prove to me. Mm. Like we had some because I don't know every hybrid rider there is in New Zealand, mm. especially if they bought a bike from a, from a bike shop. Right. But I think they expected me to know every single rider. So when some of them legitimately damaged their their um charger, their charger yeah. for whatever reason. And they ring and they say, oh, I got a hybrid. Can I get another charger? And I said to them, yes, you can, but just give me the proof of purchase just to make sure they felt yeah. offended. They didn't felt like they have to prove to me mm. um, because they already bought one. Yeah. So so some people, after we had a little, a couple of minutes talk about the real reason behind that, I think they understood, but not straight away. So right. stepped on some toes, unfortunately. Yeah. But that's the risk you take if if you make such a bold statement. Nobody yeah. gets a charger yeah. without yeah. actually having proof of purchase. Yeah. But it had to be done. Right. Um, so a serial number doesn't cut it. No, because the, everybody can tell you the serial number. Okay. Un unless no, it's still not. I I request proof of purchase. And the thing is as well, if if a customer sort of hasn't got it, that's fine because they can they can co contact the bike shop. They got it on file, and so it's actually not hard. Well, if they bought it second hand, well, I suppose if they just buy it second hand, they 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 could have been buying it from someone who's nicked it too. Well, that's true. They still have to. Then we would go back to to the person they bought it off, mm. and if they would say, "Well, I don't know who it was," then yeah. then then it gets tricky. Yeah, but. But yes, so we didn't have too many of those issues. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's important that you you try yeah. to protect your customers. Know, that is one way to do it. That's neat. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But yeah, that's kind of um, 
our little little story which, you do. Which, which you were sort of which we really thankful for mm. for what what for you was an easy thing mm. gifting half an hour of your time for a coffee chat but really turned our business around to to the better to and it's still it's still climbing it's still growing but it all started with this coffee Oh, that's wonderful, Frank, and and you know it, it helps you appreciate what what you have that you're able to help other people, you know, in business to to you know, mm. and and you, so we all just and I'd keep like, working and you know working with each other and especially in the Nelson region, I think we have a fantastic business community here and we have and, uh, and we really have the opportunity to help each other out. And and what I learned as well is it's you 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 take and you give, mm. so it means that. I was thankful for what you've given me, and now if I come across somebody which which is in the early stages, I could see I could actually contribute to that person's mm. business. Mm. Um, I happily do that. Mm. I don't even have to be asked. Sometimes when I see something, I could because it's it just why would you not? Yeah, you exactly. Know? And we all want to have the best. A really good community to live in, and how we can do that by, in lots of ways, and I mm. think that's a really important. Part. And it's not it's not altruism. It's not just because you think it's the good thing to do. Mm. It because I, you know, you want to live in a good community, of and, and so it yeah. helps make a community yeah. better by helping other people along. Yeah. So. Great. Yeah. Well, no, it's been it's been a lovely um, working with you, Frank, and and I particularly enjoyed. Where the, the when you lent us a couple of bikes when I was keen on on having our staff trial e bikes as yep. a way of commuting to and from work yeah and uh, so we had two of your two of your bikes for a month I think two months I think two yeah. months or oh, two yeah. months yeah I had so many staff we had so many staff and yeah. and most people you know had a go with it uh, I think I was the only one that bought one at the time, but I'm sure you know the mm. the memory will 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 linger there, and and people will be back to you to to buy a, a hybrid bike. Uh, but thank you for that. I think it's a. And I mean, the thing we all try to do our bit about climate change and all those little things. Now, now, the idea was again of um, not again how many how many sales because. It would have been nice, but sales sometimes aren't the trigger of doing something. Mm. The trigger was, what would your staff like to actually, could they see themselves using an e-bike to get yeah. to work? Yeah. Not yeah. so much the selling or not. It was yeah. like, it was I, had opportunity. I, I had yeah. nothing to lose. But those people had a real chance to mm. sort of, for whatever days, I think we worked out, everybody could have the bike for two or three days. Mm. And, and have a fair go at it going to work and back mm. just to see if it w would work for them because how many times do you have a chance to to show to him to say to your employer hey there is a bike just you that and tell yeah. me if you like it or not if it would if you would like it we may even be able to help you to get one yeah but at least you got a fair go without actually spending any of your money mm. just see how it's going to go and i think some people like that they may not been ready to buy a bike at the time but I at least could say if the a bike would suit them, we'll get to work. Absolutely. And if it would have worked, then we would have had one more car off the road. Yeah. No, I think it's. Uh, I think. I think e-bikes are a fantastic technology. I mean, I, I love mine, and uh, mm -hmm. I think it, it's really is, is the way of the future. And and the more cars that we can, stop using, you know, the better. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. So. Cool. Thank you, Peg. Thanks, Frank. It was great catching up with you again. Indeed, yeah. And sharing the past and yeah, and hopefully we do a lot more things together. Indeed. Cool. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you, Peg. Great. Thank you so much for watching my podcast. I hope some of you out there are inspired and motivated by it. Remember, anybody can do what I have done. It just takes courage, determination, and a bit of luck which we all have. Now, go out there, enjoy the ride of your lifetime. <music>